Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, guys. It is a beautiful Wednesday morning. It's going to be actually a really nice when a warmer Wednesday for a December. I think we're almost going to hit 50. I can't wait to probably break out the grill. So uh, we're going to be talking about how to set the stage for a winning 2021. You know, we all can't wait to 2020 passes us, but I hope that a lot of you have taken the opportunity to use the time to really reflect and think about what things need to be done to change the outlook uh, on whatever your goals and desires are as it relates to are you looking to spend more time with family, friends. Um, you know, I know that with COVID, it's shutting down a lot of the country and we can't do much, but there are always things that we can do to stay connected. Uh, we do rely on social technology, uh, social, social media and technology a lot more than what we should. Going back to the basics and being able to just pick up the phone and call somebody, talk to them, or shoot, even if it comes down to meeting outside and being socially correct in the distance and just being able to talk to each other and telling everybody that you love them, you care about them, you show them you love them, do whatever it takes to be able to um, show them that you care, okay? And showing you care doesn't mean have to be in form of a present or a gift or spending money, but time is the most valuable, precious commodity out there actually not commodity it's a um it's a gem all right it's something that we tend to not make enough time of and i'm seeing a lot of people getting ill during this time of year stress i'm not talking about covid ill but we're talking about stress we're working way too hard and not just being um healthy or good to ourselves and we really need to get back to that guys so uh, with that being said um i just want to talk about as it relates to being able to have a winning 2021, um, set a goal. What is your goal? What are you planning on doing as far as your goal for 2021? If you own a home already, are you going to be buying investment property? Uh, if you're not buying a home, uh, are you, what are your goals? Again, what is the goal with the money? Have a plan with your money. Even if you don't have a specific goal as far as what it is you're trying to purchase as far as a, a property, uh, what about investment goals? What about putting money aside into savings or into a, a college fund? Uh, college is expensive. Uh, have you ever thought about it as far as with college other alternatives? I work with a lot of clients naturally with today in forms of the... Um, you know, applying for a mortgage and the student loan debt. Student loan debts is now counted against your income uh, if you're going through an FHA financing. And so then if you have whatever your student loan debt is, they're taking 1% of that and uh, taking it. And so say, for example, you make 100000 and let's just say you have $100,000 in student loan debt, they're going to take 1%. And then with that 1%, they're going to take $1,000 so if you're making um, ten, let's say ten thousand dollars a month, then that means you're gonna be only gauged that you make nine thousand dollars a month for your income to be gauged on how to pre-qualify for a mortgage. So then we can certainly talk about the different things, and we can certainly talk about it as a topic. In fact, it is one of the topics for one of the future Winning Wednesday topics uh, to discuss uh, in the near future. Um, so, but anyways. Uh, so what is the goal? Is it, if it's, again, if it's not purchasing property, are we looking at the ability to just save money? Are you planning on, excuse me, do you want to just at least have a, a plan to, how am I going to save $10,000 this year? And especially if we are working from home a lot, you know, we know some expenses have gone up while some expenses have gone down. Um, you know, is the goal to set to save $10,000 a year realistic. And I honestly know that it is realistic and you can save way more than that if you set your mind to it. So when your mind, you have a mission and you set your mind to it, it can certainly happen, okay? So setting the goal, whatever the goal is, have it in writing. What is the financial goal? And then what is your plan of action? How is that plan of action going to be structured so that you can meet those goals and make sure you set a budget? Uh, if the budget is to think about 
again, if you're planning on saving the $10,000, how are we going to do it? And if you're making, if you bring home $5,000 a month, that means you have to save at $10,000. Boy, I have to do the math. Five, so 5000 which means 10% of your take-home pay is going to be saved so that you can save that $10,000. So if you can really set your mind to it, bringing home 5000 and saving 5000 is certainly a possibility if we even look at just the minimal things. Um, how can we cut cable? Shoot, I have a friend that sells uh, sticks, and then they don't. You don't have to pay a two, three hundred dollar cable bill, uh, but you are watching at. Hey, Tasha, um, looking at saving there. Sometimes buying Costco doesn't mean savings because there's waste. So make sure that these are the things that you have to make sure you save, you um, portion, plan, prioritize. I mean, that's really big. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of different debates online talking about, I saw one yesterday that said, um, does it mean that a realtor is, what was it? What does it say when a realtor decides not to drive a fancy car? Um, and there were some plenty of responses, but my whole thing is this. You work hard, you're entitled to do whatever you want with your money. But however, at the end of the day, what is there to show for? And if your priority is to show for by saying that I want to be able to drive a nice car because I work hard for my money, then certainly by all means you can do so. However, with a plan of action, that car that you want to drive is very doable. It's just a matter of how to make it happen, okay? And what I mean by that, as far as like, okay, a car payment uh, in today's time with today's cars, an average car note payment can be five, $600 a month. So if it's five, $600 a month, do we have to buy the best brand new car on the on the, on the lot why not buy and this has always been my theory for years um, I rather purchase a car that's maybe five years older just five years old at that point most of the depreciation has come off the top of the car pay, um, the value and then that way you can still buy a relatively newer car without having to pay that five six seven hundred dollar car note payment why not let it be two, three hundred dollars? Okay, so hi Abby, hi Jennifer, thank you, um, and you'll have to uh, keep following us because we will be bringing back tax tip Tuesdays and Thursdays. And Abby is one of my fabulous uh, tax um, tax business uh, gurus, and we'll be having her come on board and talk about more about tax tips. Um, so, anyways, um, anyways, planning prioritizing, preparing, and making sure you have a budget. Okay, guys, set it together. If you need any offline help, let me know. Um, and at the end of the day, everyone talks about credit. And credit, I only need it for um, when I'm buying something. You'll be really surprised. Credit is very much tied to a lot of different aspects of your life. Good credit will give you a better interest rate Yes, for your car, your house. But what about um, credit card bills? Did you think about that? Um, not having this most solid credit score means that if you have a credit card balance, what happens then? You're looking at a 30% APR interest rate that you're being charged for, for, those, for that balance. I was consulting a client, a prospective client for next year, and we were talking yesterday and I said this, and I say this to every one of my clients, I'm like, look, if you have credit card debt and you have money in the bank, I understand having money in the bank for a rainy day. However, your money in the bank is earning under 
interest rate, guys. So it's earning less than 1% interest rate. What are you doing with keeping a balance on your credit card bills that are accruing anywhere from 19 to 30%, 40% interest rate? That is ridiculous, guys. Go ahead and set a plan. And if you can, I would love for you to plan on getting into 2021 in a winning position by eliminating or minimizing your debt. Okay, I know holidays are here and we want to do fancy things and do nice things because we had a rough year. And you can certainly do that. But then at that point, plan on figuring out how you can eliminate or minimize the debt as much as possible so that we don't have to worry about going into 2021 on a bad level. I mean, debt is, there's some things that are good debt and there's things that are bad debt. Is good debt, what is good debt? Good debt is um, like a mortgage, okay? You are, at the end of the day, paying towards something that's yours. And okay, the, I'm sure that the debate will be, hey, but Wendy, I can buy, everything I pay for is going to end up being paid for and it's mine. However, what's going to happen uh, is it making you money? Now, that's the key. If you can make money with the asset or the thing that you have in your hand, like, okay, uh, um, a $300 mixing bowl may be outrageously high, but however, if you're buying that mixer to make money, like you're making a cake for somebody, then that that's awesome. That's leveraging your assets, okay? And then, um, or um, the expensive juicers. I have a friend who's going into the business of getting into plant-based uh, eating and uh, holistic uh, healing and juices and paid, I think, $1,000 for a juicer. Now, most people won't pay for a thousand two thousand dollar juicer however this is going into a business and that's an uh, that's a necessary piece of equipment that's going to generate more income okay so now that's what we're talking about when you are able to have an asset have an asset that's going to make you money hey if you want to buy that fancy car then by all means buy it then uber uber then you can use that car to become now a business expense or an, uh, an asset that's creating for your business. So a lot of different things we can definitely talk about. So with all that being said, how can we help you get a winning 2021? Eliminate or minimize as much debt. Put together a financial plan. What is that goal? Are you trying to purchase a, uh, you know, even if it's a saving money or purchasing something, whatever it is, then create a budget. And what else do I have here? Um, what is your plan of action? How are you going to approach that goal, whatever it is? And again, I'm here to help you with whatever that desire is. It doesn't have to be real, real estate related. I have plenty of business partners that can help you do whatever you want to do. And um, if you need an accountability party, so if, if you need an accountability partner, let me know. We can set up a group and uh, help you get into a winning 2021. With all that being said, guys, thank you so much. Hope you're having a great holiday season. Be safe, be blessed, and know that I am here for you and I love you. Take care. Bye-bye.